when we come into the world, we take on human form. You might say that we're unique in our individuality. We are an individuation of the divine. Another way of putting it, a microcosm of the macrocosm. And in the first months of any baby's life, the baby is constantly experimenting. First of all, it's fascinated by fingers, its digits. And then later, concepts such as time, space, happiness, sadness, self or non-self-acceptance. Well, they do come about, but certainly not for some time. For the simple reason that a concept of any such kind for a baby at that early age doesn't even exist. No language, so no thought. A baby wouldn't even know what a concept was. We do, however, have a rapidly evolving brain. Some 10 billion neurons forming synapses or junctions in the brain all of the time, buzzing away. In fact, in the first two years, 1.8 million synapses, junctions in the brain are formed per second. That's because there's constant stimulus going on. The baby has arrived on the scene. Everybody wants to take a look at the newborn baby. There's stimulus growing. There's a development happening. And the neurons are the expression of that, busily forming new connections all of the time. However, something awful happens after just a couple of years of every baby's existence in that almost 50% of those newly formed neurons are culled, literally just wiped out. It's like a systematic slaughter for the simple reason that at two years old, going on to four years old, we're no longer the new kid on the block. We're blending in with the rest of the furniture. We're not given the stimulus, the attention that perhaps we first received. And so much so when so much as 50% of those neurons are literally severed, that's when our reality about life is formed, how we see it, how we touch it, how we taste it, how it looks like, how it feels like to us. That's how our reality is from there on in. Now, since we all go through that process, it's not too hard then for each of us to understand that when a newborn, when in early life, a child has experienced isolation or difficult times or punishing times or violation of any kind, abuses of any kind, rejection of any kind, disinterest, then the sense of self-worth or of belonging never gets to be truly nurtured or instilled in the same way as it would in any other circumstance. So much so that the child is programmed to believe that life is nothing more than a battlefield, that there's me and then there's the rest of life, and that somehow or other it always feels as though I am going to be against it. Now, in the 25 years or more that I've worked in the field of addiction, I can tell you that in every single case bar none, where there has been dependence on alcohol or substance use, or when there's been mental agitation or emotional disturbance that has led to the person having to go to extremes in order to self-soothe those early formative years, there has always been sign that that kind of separation, that non-sense of belonging in the world, of having a rightful place in it, ever occurred in those early formative years. And worse than that, because where intimidation of that first environment that we were born into is no longer the environment we may still be living in, that's when our negative self-talk takes up instead and continues to give us a really, really difficult time, always convincing ourselves that we're not worthy. 
It's when feelings of shame and guilt, often accompanied by high anxiety or depression, become our continued expression. And at the core of all of this suffering is guilt. Now, guilt is often misconstrued as something we got wrong. It's also sometimes thought of as just one of our emotions. I can tell you it's a far more deeply ingrained belief that we are actually disconnected from life, as though life has an agenda and that we simply were not part of its plan. And so that sense of completeness that we each long for never gets to be realised. Shame literally becomes toxic, perpetrating the negative self-talk and the, the next wave of misery that we're always feeling is our constant suffering. So listen to me now as I speak directly from my heart and soul to your heart and soul. It's time to stop the end to that story, that lie about life that you may have been living, that was passed on to you by others and that you have formed as if it were a truth about yourself. For as long as you stop continuing that story about yourself, there can be no suffering. Stop identifying yourself with the lie that was formed about you. As long as you don't identify with that, there can be no belief. And without the belief, then there is going to be no judgment. And without judgment, there will be no pain. And without pain, there can be no continued suffering. No need to continue to self-soothe that which was formed as a lie a very long time ago. Let the falsehood end today. Deliberately interrupt the story and breathe. Ah. I'm safe, I'm okay, I go free. <laughs>